big statements from one of the Fed members stating that they may not need to do as much quantitative tightening as expected, which means quantitative easing will be coming back soon. I want to break down the timeline. Also, the SEC and Gary Genter have approved a Bitcoin short ETF. Want to guess which way they want to see the market to go? Remember, they haven't approved a Bitcoin spot ETF. Also, huge news around a new NFT platform and a new crypto company that has uh, brought on some ex-Coinbase members. Let's break it down. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please give me a five star rating. Quick word from our sponsor, and that is Link2, which makes private equity investment easy. Link2 is democratizing the process to be able to get equity and shares in crypto companies and tech companies. Before you had to be part of a venture capital firm or a large hedge fund or investment firm. Now, if you're an accredited investor, you can take part and double dip just like the big institutional players. Here's what they're doing. They're buying the tokens, like many of you are, but they're also investing in the companies building the infrastructure of the market. That includes exchanges, payment platforms, wallets, you name it. And some of the companies that Link2 has in their portfolio are Ripple, BitPay, D Dapper Labs, Uphold, Abra, and much more. And they continue to add uh, more crypto companies and tech companies to their portfolio. So it's a great opportunity to make money on both sides of the aisle here. And once again, this is how the institutional players are doing it. And they have the opportunity to make money um, with many of these companies before the IPOs. So Link2 as a company and the folks who are participating at that time got access before Coinbase's IPO and of course did very well. So more com crypto companies are going to go uh, do go public and of course do IPO. So you have an opportunity here. Best of all, with the market pullback across the board, uh, valuations of companies are, of, of course, down a bit. So certainly the entry points to get uh, shares is going to be lower as well. So great opportunity. If you'd like to learn more about Link2, check out the link in the description. Now, let's look at the market here. Uh, not much to report. Bitcoin still over $20,000. Ethereum back over $1,100. Uh, seeing some green from a 24-hour perspective. Right now, nothing to write home about, my friends. It is just let's wait and see what happens. Is this the bottom? Has Bitcoin found it? Are we moving back up? Well, I I'm not calling it either way, guys, because I think we need to let these things play out and prove themselves. We need to see some consistency, right? You need to see at least a few weeks of moving upwards. But, um, you know, as I stated in yesterday's video, I don't think the bottom is in. You know, we may see a relief rally. We may see a bounce upwards and, and then a further crash down. So just be prepared for all these scenarios. We are in a bear market. There is selling pressure. There is macroeconomic factors with the Fed inflation. Also crypto uh, liquidity and, and uh, you know, li liquidation uh, problems that may happen in the market. Uh, we may see Celsius get liquidated. We may see some other stable coin collapse. I don't know. I'm not saying I want that to happen or that is going to happen. I'm just saying there's a probability of it happening. And you got to be prepared mentally for all of those scenarios, guys. When it comes to investing, you just don't want to hear the bullish scenario. You want to hear the bearish as well. And I'm bullish macro level, so I don't care what the hell happens in the next three to four months. I'm buying the dips where I can. I'm being smart. I'm only putting money in that I can afford to lose. I'm not putting a million bucks. I don't have a million bucks to invest. So to be transparent, I'm putting in where I can extra money, right? So that's how I look at it. My savings, my 401k, my other investments are not involved in this. So just heads up, I am, I'm also buying some stocks. I, I, I picked up the, uh, the dip this morning, bought some Twitter stock. Actually, I felt that, you know, it's down. Um, I know the Elon thing is still happening. And also, uh, you know, comments where Elon made about, uh, you know, looking to integrate more crypto payments and so forth. I, I felt that's a bullish move. And I think that's the future. And while it may take, I don't know, a year or two years for me to get a nice return on my Twitter stock, I'm, I'm really willing to wait, right? Uh, regardless, we've seen that 
um, you know, markets move in cycles and things will go back up and, and higher highs will come, but you got to be prepared sometimes hold for years. And that's how I'm looking at it. And uh, certainly I swing trade a bit, you know, when the thing, when mar- when the markets start moving up, I don't let you guys know when I'm doing that, but um, I'm a long-term holder and that's what has made me money historically, you know, going back to 2016, <laughs> when I first entered the market and going through the bull run of 2017 and then the bear market of 2018, 2019. And then I had to wait till 2020 into 2021 to make some money. So I hope you guys understand that. And that gives you some perspective, but you don't listen to the headlines. Crypto is going to zero. Crypto is dead. That is nonsense. We've seen the market cycles play out. Don't listen to the sensationalized headlines or some of these people on CNBC fast money or whatever it is. Just study the charts and you'll see it's all market cycles, bull and bear playing out. Now, a big part of what's been driving all markets down and sending them into a bear market is the Fed and raising interest rates and the macroeconomic factors of recession, inflation, and so forth. I don't think I need to explain that. You guys know what's been going on. Well, today, uh, the president of the St. Louis Federal Reserve, James Bullard, made some interesting statements. He said, we don't have as far to go on QT as it might seem. For those of you who don't know what QT is, that is quantitative tightening. So obviously that's the Fed reducing their balance sheet and not printing and so forth, right? Um, So we know they've been doing this to help uh, slow down inflation and obviously raising rates and so forth. Well, the fact that he's saying this, that they may not have much more to go on here, makes sense because the markets are hurting right now, right? And real estate, stocks, crypto, obviously, So there's a lot of pain right now. And I've said it many times over the past six months, the midterm elections are this year. And there's a Democrat as a president. So as you can imagine, and don't get me wrong, Republicans do this too. uh, Biden's going to want to turn things around economically because the the Democrats are going to get destroyed. Now, I'm not here to say which one should win or whatever. I'm just stating the facts. Um, So... You could see them reverse, I think, sometime this year, and then we start to slowly move back up, right? So the Fed's going to stop QT, they're going to halt raising rates, and then they're going to start printing again, and and we'll see asset prices go up. So this is a good sign. That does not mean there's not pain coming up in the next three to four months. (laughs) Like I said, the market could keep going down. It could get very bloody, very scary. Um, But as always, market cycles. Markets go up, markets go down, they find their bottom, and then they go back up again, then they hit the top. Tail is all its time, my friends. Go to every chart and zoom out, and you'll see it. Unless there's some bankruptcy or catastrophic event that stops a specific stock or crypto like Terra Luna right from recovery, obviously those are outliers, right? We don't include that. But generally, I would say 90% of the time, crypto stocks and so forth, market cycles. And I, I, you know, obviously I show you guys the Bitcoin charts where we follow Bitcoin because it's the measuring stick for the entire crypto market. And here's some perspective. 11 years ago today, uh, Bitcoin was at 0.1 cent <laughs> uh, or less than a cent, right? Uh, I, I don't know what's, uh, no, yes. My goodness, my brain's not working today, by the way. <laughs> um, so it's just perspective, guys, and being having a macro uh, view. Now, what's interesting, uh, here's a chart from uh, the folks at Glassnode showing the Bitcoin miners' net position change. They were selling like crazy, and now they have started they have stopped selling and accumulation has restarted. So that's a good sign. Um, you know, all of these things, you want to look at them together holistically to see if we've kind of found a bottom. But once again, you know, they could go easily flip to selling again. So just, you know, just something to think about guys. And we got to, we want to watch all of these metrics and, and make sure that we are paying attention to all aspects and avenues of the market. Now, here's a great chart from, uh, Dr. Jeff Ross. And uh, he said it, he stated the greatest chart in all of finance. Notice the green arrows. So the green arrows are essentially calling the bottoms here and then a move upwards. Will it play out the same way this time? We will have to wait and see. There are no guarantees, right? Certainly we can look at the data here and say, you know what? This makes sense. And let's 
cross our fingers and hope there's a high probability of this playing out again, but there's no guarantee. But let's say, um, you know, there is a 80% probability, then yeah, maybe we found our bottom. Maybe there's a couple more months of, uh, uh, you know, pain. This is a monthly chart, by the way. There's maybe two more months into July and August of pain. And then September, maybe that's when the Fed starts reversing, midterm elections are coming up, and then we start slowly moving upwards into green candle. What's interesting, though, you know, in 2019, we saw a bounce upward, right? And then Bitcoin went back down. And um, that was a nice, you know, little rally there. I wouldn't mind that, even if we're not going to new all-time highs yet. But a nice rally upwards, take some profits, you know, let it go down, buy the dip, and then run up back into a larger bull, bull cycle. But of course, I'm not expecting another massive bull run like we saw last year for another maybe two years, guys. So uh, just, you know, we, we see these, you know, little rallies here on, on the macro bull trend upwards, then we can certainly be prepared and take some profits there. So definitely something to think about. So this is not a model. This is just the data, guys. So this is very, very interesting. Now, let's jump into some news. The UK government has dropped plans for data collection rules on self-custody Bitcoin wallets. That's some good news. Um, you know, the UK and the folks in Europe have been a bit more uh, progressive and a bit more um, open-minded when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto regulations versus the United States. And here's a problem that we have. Gary Gensler and the SEC, we know... There's a lot of things hanging in the balance with them. Obviously, a Bitcoin spot ETF. And remember, a Bitcoin spot ETF gets approved. What happens next? An Ethereum spot ETF gets approved and so on and so forth, right? More altcoins. Well, Gary Gensler has failed to approve a Bitcoin spot ETF. And he, if he had approved it last year, by the way, in the bull run, we would have seen some massive price run up, guys, possibly uh, Bitcoin going to over $150,000. But of course, that didn't happen. Well, look at what he's approving here. ProShares will launch the first US short Bitcoin linked ETF on the New York Stock Exchange tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, we don't have a problem with the futures and the shorts because we know that could be used to drive the price down, right? To punish the, the asset class. And we know, as I've been saying for so long, he is protecting the incumbents, which are getting disrupted. That is JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and the other banks. He is supporting the banking cartel. So, you know, I, Will Clement had a great uh, comment and, and thought on this that I really like. He said, so there's now a short Bitcoin ETF, a futures ETF, a closed end fund trading at a 30% plus discount, a 401k option for Bitcoin, but no spot ETF. It is clear that Gary Genser and the SEC have an agenda against Bitcoin, not just Bitcoin, the entire crypto market, guys. Um, so I'm glad some of these Bitcoin guys are starting to recognize what's happening. And remember, July 6th, that is a big day, right? Many, I don't know if you guys remember, quick pop quiz, what happens then? What's a big move with around a Bitcoin spot ETF? It is Grayscale. So that is when the decision is due. And remember, Grayscale bought on some uh, big timers, guys, on their legal team, ready to sue the SEC. Let's see what happens there, my friends. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. And uh, I, I, you know, I think if Gary Gensler and the SEC don't approve the Bitcoin spot ETF, uh, it will not just be Grayscale. They'll be suing them. There'll be a lot of other companies. And many of them are not you know, crypto-specific companies. They are legacy traditional finance companies like your, uh, the folks at uh, Van Eck and, and many others who are trying to get a Bitcoin ETF approved. So Genser's going to have problems. Let's see what they do, guys. You know, could, and I'm saying could, potentially, could potentially... <laughs> That happened. He, the Bitcoin spot ETF gets approved and maybe, I don't know, the Fed reverses sometime soon and then we start seeing a move upward. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Right now, it doesn't seem that way. Right now, uh, uh, even if the Bitcoin spot ETF gets approved, we have so much downward pressure and um, uh, you know all these different catalysts that are driving the markets down that 
I don't know if that's going to be able to, you know, will it be able to benefit? The price is going to be able to benefit from that. So we'll have to wait and see. But it just shows you what Gensler's thinking, right? He he knows what he's doing, guys. This this is all part of his plan until Congress acts and you know gets get some clarity and, and regulations passed. We're going to have to deal with this nonsense from Goldman Gary Genser. Now, uh, nevertheless, regardless of what's happening with the SEC Genser and the price. Folks are still raising capital and still building. The building is where is what happens in bear markets, right? So X Sushi CTO raises eight million dollars for NFT lending platform Astaria. The platform, led by CEO Justin Bram and DeFi vet Joseph DeLong, aims to provide instant liquidity for your JPEGs and should be available to the public by September. So we're going to see a lot more technology being built around NFTs, Metaverse, Web3, and so forth. Remember, these are all branches off of the crypto tree, right, guys? Because these NFTs are on blockchains, and many of the blockchains that you guys have tokens for, right? Whether it be Ethereum, Cardano, uh, and, and many others. So this is great. The round was led by True Ventures, Arrington Capital. That's Michael Arrington. I recently interviewed him. Ethereal Ventures, Winter Mew, Genesis Trading, Ledger Prime, Hypersphere Ventures, so on and so forth. So remember, put your business thinking cap on here. Look at the valuations of, of cryptocurrency tokens and digital assets and NFTs. They're down, right? We're not in a bull market. But these companies are putting, placing capital, millions of dollars, right? Well, one would think, oh no, you think they're scared it's going to zero, that it's, it's done, it's dead. This is the institutional money that they don't listen to headlines, guys. They're looking at data, trends, uh, analytics, and so forth. And that's how they've beaten our retail for years. And that's what I tried to communicate with you guys because I, you've seen who I've interviewed. I've interviewed many of these institutional investors. They don't care about the, the price. They know now is actually a great buying opportunity when there's blood on the streets. Be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. So you got to remember these investment principles and leave your emotions at the door. I'm not saying it's an easy thing. It's hard. It took me years to be able to build up that mindset and, and, and to not think of it with my feelings or emotions but look at the data. And that's what I'm trying to share with you guys here. Finally here, uh, crypto platform Matrix Port hires big name Coinbase exec to build US business. BlockWorks exclusive Anthony DiMartino, former head of risk strategies at Coinbase has joined Matrix Port, the company confirmed today. So, you know, while some companies are firing because they, you know, shot over their skis a bit, uh, you know, like Crypto.com, uh, BlockFi, all these guys, Coinbase, of course, uh, you know, the, the, the talent still out in you know, a need for talent is still out there and they're going to other companies. And look, it's not like these folks are these companies, crypto companies are laying off 50 percent of their staff. Usually it's like five, 10 percent or so forth. And I'm not trying to diminish that. You know, it sucks. People are losing their job. That shouldn't happen. But, um, you know, these guys are going to other companies or they're launching their own thing and building uh, great companies. So Anthony DiMartino, a Wall Street veteran, has, oh, excuse me, was mostly recently head of risk strategies, institutional decentralized finance and derivatives trading at Coinbase. The lengthy title, one source who was done, who has done business with the exchange said, indicates DiMartino's departure deals a big blow. Matrix, Matrix Port representatives confirmed the hire. A Coinbase spokesperson did not respond to multiple requests for comment. DiMartino declined to comment. Cynthia Wu, Matrix, Matrix Port's chief operating officer, told BlockWorks that the company executives are convinced DiMartino's experience, passion, and style fits Matrix well very well. So these folks continue to expand regardless of what is happening and... Um, uh, Coinbase just looks like they lost some money big here, but that's how competitive uh, the crypto industry is getting now. There's a competition for talent because we're still very early. And, you know, think back to the 2000 dot com bubble pop, right? Because it wasn't a bubble. Did that mean that the technology was dead or the internet was dead or crypto, uh, no, or excuse me, internet companies were dead? Of course not. Google, Amazon, eBay. Great companies came out of that. Yes, your pets.com died, of course, right? And a lot of others that were just selling stupid ads 
they had no business model, right? But that's how you got to look at it, guys. That is what's happening here. And, and, and everybody's trying to still grab the talent, get more capital, of course, and keep building. And there's going to be a lot of building in this bear market. So um, I hope you have the perspective of markets move in cycles. Leave your emotions at the door. Don't invest what you're, you, you can't afford to lose and have a macro long-term view and you will make money. Uh, that's, that's how you got to look at it. And, you know, I know Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger don't like crypto because it, it's disrupting them and they were late to tech. But, you know, listen to some of the things Warren Buffett has said about investing in, in just even if you're looking at stocks, right? And, and the long-term view that he's talked about and um, even when he, he's, he calls people out that when price starts crashing, they start panicking and sell, right? So it's not wrong to sell if you see the price going down because maybe you, you, you're still going to make a profit. That's fine. But if you're panic selling because you're scared or because you see the market going down, that's the wrong way to look at it, right? Even if like something crashed, like I didn't take as much profit as I wanted to last year, but I didn't just start dumping like, oh no, I'm going to dump all my crypto. No, I'm just leaving it. Okay. No problem. I took some profit. I'm okay. Um, I, I don't have an emergency where I need the money. So I just let it sit there. And I had it in some lending platforms earning interest, but I pulled it off because of what's been going on with uh, Celsius and some of these other guys. So, you know, once things start to calm down a bit, I'll probably, probably put it back into uh, like BlockFi and so forth and start earning interest again. But once again, I'm just sharing what I'm doing. It's not financial or investment advice, but I'm just trying to share these investment principles. They're so important. And I think uh, TV, or I should say finance news on TV has really have, it has had people to looking at markets in, in, from a, an emotional standpoint, people don't do their research and understand the market cycles. And they just move because of Jim Cramer. And it's like, you're going to get wrecked by listening to Jim Cramer. Do your own research. Anyway, guys, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts or comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, and I'll talk to you all later.